I mean, to me right now, we are in a state which reminds me of uh, a time in SARS when a lot of uncertainty uh, is still associated with the virus. There's a rapid uh, transmission of the virus uh, from human to human. Uh, we still don't understand where the end of this is going to be because we, we could be in the, just the middle and it'll be gone you know, by the summer, uh, which happened with SARS, or this could be a, uh, a coronavirus that may be around us for a long time. So we're still learning daily about how the virus is, um, is, is transmitting. And I think that's just a, uh, it's a time where we need to gather as much data, analyze as much data, uh, be critical in the data that we're analyzing, and to, to know where we're at in time. If we look back to SARS, I mean, I think they're taking um, actions that are born from learning from the SARS outbreak in 2003 time period. And in this case, because we don't know, and this is happening, we, we fear most what we don't understand and we're at a point where we don't understand. With a virus like this new coronavirus, we don't understand it. And I think, you know, you don't want to do too little, right? It may be in retrospect, you, we, and hopefully we look back like, wow, it wasn't as bad as we thought. That's the best position to be in. Uh, and we're working on the structures, the three-dimensional atomic structures of viruses and of the proteins in viruses. Uh, the Zika virus, uh, the structure of that was done here at Purdue and released to the world a few years ago, right after the virus came out. We, my colleagues here responded to that rapidly. And what we're working on are the structures of the proteins and enzymes in coronaviruses that allow them to replicate. Understanding the process through the structure, we can then figure out what kind of drug molecules can interrupt those processes, stop the runner or stop the enzyme, and basically uh, kill the virus.